We welcome all of you, and especially the speaker, uh, Prof. Go. Uh, he's a very difficult man to get, but it's a privilege to have him. If you consult him, you have to wait for a long queue. But today, we're very happy to have him. He will speak to us about something which is very, very real. We are all moving towards that direction. You look at my grey hair, huh? all of us are moving towards that direction. So, but in the meantime, let's turn to number 542, unless the thing, okay, come on. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Let's rise. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. This one, the tune is wrong. So Verse again, once again, let us be true and faithful. One, two. Let us be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory. When we all be seated and let us speak to God in prayer father we thank you for this lovely evening you have brought us here to your house we thank you that we can worship you because you have shown your love to us and truly we want to show our love back to you we thank you that as we go through life, we have the Savior to be our guide and our master. And so we commit this time to you. We pray for all of us present here this evening that we may benefit from the talk shared by Prof. Go, as well as we can 
be fed spiritually because you love us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? There is sunshine in my soul, 499. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than the glows of any earthly sky. Why? For Jesus is my light. Let's listen to the chorus again after we sing the chorus. The chorus. The chorus. The chorus. Oh, the sun. Your blessing number five six three. Uh, the chairman says, must stand. <laughs> no, you stand, 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 okay. It's a very high pitch. Lies below to a tempest pose. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Blessings, name them one. 
to share with you something. In July 2006, that was my first time ever to be hospitalized. And I was hospitalized for one week because I had a stroke. And uh, my dear wife, she can tell you. Of course, I don't know anything. Huh? But God is good. You can see that he has restored me, not 100%, but about 90% or 95%. Uh, my right side, the toes a bit curled, and so walking a bit unsteady. But other than that, I have been able to perform my normal duties of work. After my discharge from the hospital, I was in the exactly one week after my discharge, I was told you must do something to uh, keep yourself uh, well and strong. And I decided to adopt two methods of improving myself. Number one, I learned memory verses. When I was a young person, I learned memory verses. And so, over the years, this has become a habit. And uh, memorizing God's word has been a tremendous help to me because it ministers to me, to my heart, and also strengthens my, um, my uh, mouth and so on. So, for example, I memorized Psalm 16, 7. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Another verse, uh, Psalm 107, verses 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. So, memorizing verses helped me tremendously. And the other thing was, I learned. I used to have a hymn book, so I sang many of the hymns to myself. And uh, some of the hymns, it's not possible for me to memorize them from top to bottom. So I'm able to take certain parts. Just now when we sang, when we all get to heaven, the third verse, I ask you to sing again. And it says, let, them, let us be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. So memorizing, scriptures and singing hymns and the parts which are very meaningful to me I memorize that I cannot remember the whole hymn but certain parts in the season of our plenty in the season of our need we will find his grace sufficient we will find his love complete so these things are real encouragement to me that God still loved me, God cares for me. And despite uh, my physical limitation, uh, I can uh, know that he is with me. And so I want to encourage all of us, as I look around, um, you are all about the same, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, 
so. Um, uh, in fact, there's one verse I memorized. Proverbs 16.31. Proverbs 16.31. A grey head is a crown of glory. The grey head is a crown of glory. But doesn't mean that all grey heads are crown of glory. You know, sometimes we are, uh, what's it called, Laugina. <laughs> it is found in the way of righteousness. It is found in the way of righteousness. And so these things do encourage us. And I trust that whatever condition we're in, let us uh, learn God's word in whatever way we can. Eh? And let us sing the beautiful hymns. And they are really wonderful. So we are all moving towards that direction. Afterwards, Prof. Gun will give us a bit more insight and I trust that we will benefit from this session. So let's turn to hymn number uh, 56, day by day, by each trusting moment. Day by day, with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Come, let's rise. Day by day, Good evening, everyone, and welcome again to all of you, especially those who are not from our church. You have come from near and far. As, uh, our professor, actually, he's got three surnames. Go is a surname. Lee is a surname. Gun is also a surname. And people tend to call him Professor Gun. <laughs> so I hope he doesn't mind if we forget and we call him Professor Go or Professor Lee, or Professor Gan, all three belong to him. He, he, he can, he can uh, lay claim that all three are his name. Uh, last year, he came to speak to us. How many of you were here? If I can see your hands. Oh, quite a few. So, Prof Go, you've got a faithful following, got a lot of fans. <laughs> we are so thankful that he agreed to come back. You know how far he lives? West Coast Road. And uh, he said he better 
take a taxi instead of drive here. Afterwards, he will get lost, you know. So he's here. And we are, we are really, really so privileged to have him. He's going to speak in a little while, but before he does, we have other uh, program for you. And after the program, we have light refreshments, which will be served by the ladies' group. <clears throat> uh, and tonight, I'm so happy, since I've got such a capable husband, I do just a little bit of the job. So now I'll hand over to uh, Miss Wee Eiling. She is one of our regular, uh, she, she is our regular pianist supporting us in the ladies' group. So give her a big round of applause, please. <laughs> She's got a surprise for us. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing a sketch. Okay. Um, Betty has asked me to do an exercise program. But you can see that I have all these things. So what kind of exercise can I do, right? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, where are you most, besides your bedroom, huh? where are you mostly uh, in, your, in your house? In the living room, in the garden, in the kitchen? Where were you mainly? <laughs> uh, sorry? Dining room. Dining room. Okay, that's well. Okay, very good. Dining room. Okay. Now, um, I do not know, but maybe most of you might be in the kitchen quite a bit, right? I know my mother is in the kitchen quite a bit, and she's also got her TV in the room, uh, in the kitchen, sorry, so that when she's working, she watches TV. You know, huh? Okay, now, Betty has asked me to do a program. I was thinking what to do. I'm going to do a short exercise demo for you. You've got to help me with it. But it's got something that will not take up any of your time. Okay? Any t you don't need to go to the gym. You don't need to do anything. It's all there. All right. Now, <clears throat> if you're in the kitchen, you can't do any exercise when you're cutting anything. You might cut your hand and all that. Okay. Now, the most, the thing, the, 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 only, the place where you can really do exercise when you're watching TV. What do you do when you watch TV? Oh, then you laugh. Okay. Now, I'm going to teach you something. Sometimes when it's like the, it's not so exciting, especially when the commercials come on. This is something that you can do. Now, I'm going to do four parts of my exercise, okay? The first part is, when you're watching TV, you can do something very easily. You take something, you know, something from the kitchen and a plate, but don't, don't take a porcelain and break, you know, drop and break. Huh? Take something plastic, plastic cover. When you're watching TV, you can do some stretches, okay? The first thing, you can do some stretches. You take, and then you do this. You stretch all, no, maybe you can do it with me, come on. Give it, you know, give a bit more space. Yeah, make sure. Do it with me. Pretend you're holding a plate now, okay? So you do maybe like that, okay? Like that. You do a stretching. You stretch all the way to the left. Doesn't matter which side. Now you could feel the opposite direction, a bit of stretch, right? Yeah, that's very good. It's on the stretch. Now, turn to the other side. You do a bit of stretch. Now look in front. Look in, in front. Don't follow your body. So look in front on the way. So you could feel a bit of stretch. So there's something you can do. Now, there's another stretch that you can do also while watching TV, the commercials come on. Now, do this. Reach out all the way to the top. Now, I forgot to tell you, hold each stretch for five seconds. So, like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can do this, or you can do the other stretch. Push all the way to the front, and you can do this. Push. Now, you can feel that the back muscles is being stretched, okay? So, hold. One, Two, three, four, five. Okay, your next, your TV is on. Okay, you watch. <laughs> okay, that's one part. You do your stretching when the commercials come on. Okay, remember the couple of stretches. Okay, finish. Next commercial come on. Now, you can do this. You can, okay, you can do a bit of weight training. You don't need weights. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not advertising, uh, but high baked beans. <laughs> Avalon, anything about this size. This is about 500 grams. This is not so good, a bit too small. Uh. Campbell's soup, not so good. So, take two cans in your hand. Uh, pretend you have two cans in your hand right now. Huh? So, you're watching TV, the commercials come on. So boring, right? Now, let's do a little bit of exercise. 
This is weight training, the second part. Okay. Now we can do this. This is something that you can do, right? If you can do, you can open your legs a bit and then you can do in between your legs so that you can stretch your hand all the way. All right? That's something you can do. And you can do this. Put up your elbows, just like that. No, just um, like that. Hold it this way. Now, just go up and down. Oh, no. Don't move. This part, this part doesn't move. Okay? Just move up and down. You know, the, first, the first exercise did your biceps. This is for your triceps. Uh -huh. Okay? So you get very nice arms. Okay? So you do each one five times. This is weight training. Okay? Okay. All right, the other thing you can do is you can do this, butterfly, up and down, slowly, and then up and down. Okay, weight training. Let's do five. Like one, two, three, four. Ah, last one, last one, last one. Five. Okay, very good. One more weight train, one more maybe for the weights, huh? you can do up and down. So you do all the way up, maybe you open your legs, and then you up and down. Five times. Okay, your program is on now. Okay, you watch. Okay, you watch your program. So the first one, remember, you did some stretching, right? You take the plate and you stretch. The second one, you did some weight training. Okay, now the commercials come on. Oh, so boring, your program is not... It's finished. I forgot to finish. Okay, you're going to do aerobics. Some of you might have steps, so it's easy. What you can do is, you, of course, you do steps. You know? But if you don't have, have you got something like this? Kind of stool. This is very good because it doesn't slip at the bottom. So don't use those uh, you can slip. Okay, those, use those that has a little bit of static so you don't move. So when the commercials come on, up and down. I'm not asking you to do it because there's no step. But you know what I mean, right? Up and down. For the duration of the commercial, so if the commercial starts for three minutes, you do three minutes. Very good. Okay, this is aerobics. It's very good. If the commercials are very long, too bad. Sorry, you got to do it for a long time. <laughs> okay, so you do it for your commercials, right? Up and down. So you've got stretching. You've got weight training. You've got your aerobics. You can do a bit more aerobics, so the next commercial come on, maybe you do a little bit more. This time a bit faster. Okay? All right. Now, the show has ended. What you can do is this. This is my last exercise, okay? She said five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes. Okay. Now, <coughs> this is my favorite part. You're mopping the floor, right? Sometimes you have to mop the floor. No, you have to mop the floor. Whether you do it daily or you do it every other day or something. You know what you can do when you mop the floor? Is you turn on the music and you dance with your mom. <laughs> you sweep and you dance and that's very good. Because, I mean, don't let your neighbors see you doing it. <laughs> okay, not, you know, they think it might be a little bit. But it's very good. So if you can, sorry, if you can, when you're mopping the floor, but make sure you don't, you don't dance on the part that's wet because it's a bit slippery. Dance with the mop. Dum, 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 dum. Then you dance, you turn a little bit. This is very good. If you can do that because it encompasses aerobics, it encompasses um, a bit of stretching. At the same time, you know, you're doing a bit of weight. You squeeze and then, you know, and then you do that. I tell you, guaranteed, the floor will be very nice because you've got to do the whole room maybe to three songs or whatever. So you get very, very clean floors at the same time you've got the exercise done. Okay, that's it, Betty. Thank you, thank you. So. <clears throat> this is what I call the practical exercise. Doesn't cost money and you enjoy it, you have a lot of fun. Don't you all agree with me? That's a very good, talented teacher. Give her another round of applause. And I want to say just a few short words about the first pianist. The first pianist actually was my old neighbour. I used to live in St. Patrick's Road, and he lived next door. 
and I discovered that he's very talented. He was born talented, and he still has a lot of talents. So when you are, some of you were here, and it was a bit early, and it was very quiet, so I approached him. I said, hey, Patrick, Patrick. Oh, you live in St. Patrick's? He's also Patrick. <laughs> Easy to remember. So I went up to him and said, hey, can you do me a big favor? And on the spot, he just rose to the occasion. He came here quietly. You all didn't see him, eh? but I'm sure you enjoyed that music, didn't you? Give him a round of applause. Patrick. And let's see him stand up. Patrick, come on, you are my old... <laughs> Great neighbor. Very talented. Next time, I must play a bit more. Lah. Uh, I'm sure he plays Beethoven, but all those real music, <laughs> I call it. Okay. Now, we are going to have another item. The item we're waiting for, the ukulele uh, folks, and they're called UFC. For a moment, I thought we're going to get UFO landing on us. Not quite, but they're going to land here. You can see they're all in red, and they're all eager to go. Uh, UFC stands for Ukulele for Christ. They're going to sing us two songs. Let's give them a big round of applause. I think they've got a lady leader there, Mabel, another friend of mine. I'm in charge of the seniors group in Frankel. We, as you can see here, uh, th this is uh, one of the groups that we have uh, kind of formed to uh, you know, enable us to uh, fellowship with one another and also as a means of uh, outreach. Um, we started this group, I think, about one to two years back. Uh, some of us with uh, zero uh, uh, understanding of of, of uh, ukulele, and we, uh, I won't say we have arrived, we're still learning, right, and there's still much to learn. Uh, we are we're grateful to many people uh, who have um, contributed uh, to this group, right? Mabel is one of them, she's from BBTC, uh, we've got uh, Richard here, so he actually was uh, the teacher of many of us here, right, Richard, and uh, he has got a heart of gold for seniors, right? Uh, Patrick also is another one, and many of them here, right? We actually do many things uh, besides just singing because we believe that God has given us this life and we want to return back to Him. And, uh, um, and we love music. And I think many seniors, in fact, I think practically all seniors would love music, right? We love to sing, we love oldies, we love uh, community songs. Uh, we have been asked actually to uh, perform uh, next month at the National Library under the Silver Infocom. Uh, we, we, we've got to practice really hard, right? Uh, um, just, just a bit more. We, we not only do this, uh, we've got a number of other activities. Uh, we meet on Sundays, right? Uh, a group of uh, us, about 20 odd. And then on Monday mornings, we got another group meeting also, right? We discuss uh, topics on the Bible, uh, we have health talks, we have uh, practical talks also, right, okay, uh, various kind of practical <laughs> talks. Uh, we organize outings uh, in Singapore and also overseas. We just came back actually uh, about two weeks ago. We went to uh, Johor, uh, we stayed at a very nice hotel. I think most of them can test, uh, testify. We stayed at uh, uh, the Ponderosa and we went over to, to Calvary, um, church, Calvary Church actually is uh, in uh, Johor Bahru. They're looking after uh, orphanage and uh, senior citizens. So we were very privileged to, to serve these uh, people. And we, we count it an honor to, to serve uh, everyone, right? Okay? The, the, those who, who uh, were abandoned, you know, children who were abandoned, and then old folks, some of them, I know, when we approach them, you know, one of them, even before we could start, they, they cried, right? Uh, we, we were very touched. And I'm, 
very thankful to God for every one of them here. Uh, I, they, they are a wonderful bunch, right? Okay, a group of people, right? Each one of them. Um, so do come and join us. We just finished one uh, ukulele introduction course. Every year we have about one or two, right? So if you want to join us, you let me know, right? We can't just start immediately. Uh, we have different groups. And uh, one group like this one, we are quite serious. Every Thursday, we practice under the leadership of uh, Mabel. And then on the background, we have Patrick, right? He's, he's got a very sharp ear. <laughs> uh, very sharp ear, right, okay, for music. And we, we respect him for that. And we really appreciate Patrick very much uh, for what he has done uh, to help sharpen our understanding of music. So, okay, I, I can go on, but I think we've got to, to uh, do, do our part. So I will now the, uh, leave the group to do the singing and the playing. Thank you.
Thank you very much. The U, I want to say UFO. <laughs> so natural, like UFO comes out. UFC, the ukulele uh, friends. Thank you very much for performing, for the enthusiasm and the gusto. We must all age like that, happily, you know, all singing away. Uh, okay, it gives me great pleasure now to introduce the man of the hour. Uh, I call him Prof Go, and I understand that he's got a new title. I'm not going to attempt to even pronounce that new title, just in case I make a mistake. Uh, so I'm going to ask Prof Go to please come up and just say a little bit about himself before he goes into the talk. Thank you very much, Prof Go. Thank you, Betty, uh, for inviting me to uh, be here this evening. Uh, okay, um, myself, uh, I'm uh, Associate Professor Go Li Gan. Uh, I spent the last uh, 30 years uh, teaching in the university, uh, our National University of Singapore. And um, I retired last year uh, because at the age of 65, that's the longest they can keep you as a tenured staff. So after that, they say, okay, if you want to come and work, you're, you're welcome, we'll cut your pay, um, give you a new title, they call me Professor Fellow. And of course, um, I also relinquished my position as head of the division, uh, but that's okay, we all get on with life. <laughs> so uh, this is therefore second life. Uh. Okay, so um, uh, I, I must thank Betty for inviting me to come back again for um, another talk. So for those of you who have been here last year, this is uh, sequel number two, uh, or chapter two. Uh, for those of you who have not, it's okay because um, um, I try to include the most important of last year's talk into this year. So for um, this year's talk, I thought we should talk about a topic that is very common, or well, I would say common, uh, common enough, but more important is that a topic that we fear, I think we fear, even me as a doctor, I fear too. And uh, suddenly listening to Mr. Lina Ong just now, there was really great testimony that uh, a stroke that he had could be totally um, resolved, and suddenly we must uh, thank the grace of God for his uh, mercy and grace uh, that he's uh, well enough, uh, uh, fully recovered, uh, or at least nearly fully recovered. So uh, that's really, really good. Yeah? Well, we hope that um, all strokes will be like that. Lah. Certainly as doctors, we also have that aspiration. Uh, but I think the belief is really make a uh, something that makes a person whole. Yeah? Okay, so let me get on to 
the uh, talk this evening. Uh, I probably try and finish it about 20 minutes, then give us about 10 minutes to ask questions. Uh. Actually, the questions, they are more useful, right? Okay, so how to manage the measure and silence stroke? Well, um, I have framed the discussion to be four parts. Uh. First, dementia and stroke actually share some common causes uh, and therefore important to know the common causes because with one preventive soup, uh, you actually can deal with two conditions. Uh. Secondly, is that how do you prevent strokes and how do you prevent dementia? And for those of you who were here last year, this is called My Your Mind. Uh. The Australians actually have this uh, website called My Your Mind and they talk about the seven steps. Uh. So I say seven to hard to remember. Let me cut it out or let me reorganize it into four bytes. Uh. So four bytes to mind your mind. And then uh, uh, about dementia, what are the fundamentals that we must know as um, some people of this age. But I'm also addressing the younger people uh, because um, um, they may have to look after the old fogies who have got dementia. So it's therefore pertinent for all of us, young and old. Huh? Of course, there's some take-home messages which I like to leave with uh, uh, the audience at the end of the talk. Okay, so uh, two slides. Um, we know that dementia is made out of several types, uh, huh? but there's this thing called Alzheimer's disease, and there's this called um, vascular dementia, which is due to uh, blockages of the vessels, uh, small blocks uh, may not be seen as a stroke, but nevertheless, it slowly kind of uh, damage small parts of the brain. That's uh, called vascular dementia. And then, of course, we have a combination of that called mixed dementia. And that occupies 80% of all dementias. Uh. The 20%, uh, those are frontal, temporal, Louis body, uh, those are more es esot uh, esoteric stuff. Uh, let's not bother about that. Okay, so the next slide is important. Can, can, can you see it's a bit uh, smaller? Okay, so it's actually there are three boxes there. Lah, huh? So if you look at the left box, that shows you the consequence of the first two boxes, uh, which is what we don't want. Lah, huh? So we don't want a stroke, we don't want dementia, neither do we want to heart disease and kidney trouble and all that. All that. Now, if you don't want that, then you must pay attention to the first two blocks. Uh, and on your left hand side is the lifestyle. Uh, uh, so you therefore need to be very mindful that if you do not take care of the uh, lifestyle, you will end up with a middle box. The middle box are the four high risk diseases, also called the deadly quartet. Uh, uh, because these four are really quite vicious. Uh, hypertension diabetes, high cholesterol, and of course, overweight and obesity. Uh, so there are actually four uh, diseases, what we call the high-risk diseases, call them deadly quartet. There's also another fancy term uh, called metabolic syndrome. Uh, that might, uh, any of those terms will mean what, what we're trying to say. Uh. And of course, some of these are, um, you may say, hereditary, uh, uh, in the sense that some people do inherit vessels are not so good, so they therefore have got blockages earlier. Some people have got cholesterol that is high, um, inherited from their parents, um, but most of all, get it because we're old. Uh, so age is the defining reason for many of these problems. Okay, so therefore, um, the idea is to cut out any of the two stages. Uh, so if you've got Lifestyle that can be improved after to like go back and change your lifestyle. Uh, if you have those uh, high risk diseases, well, uh, make sure that you go for treatment and control it to target. Uh, uh, then it will not disturb us in terms of dementia as well as uh, this um, stroke. Okay, so with that as the starting point, so what can we do about strokes and dementia? Uh, that's it, seven steps in four bites. Uh. So last year, these were the seven steps. Oh, okay, this one just to introduce the website again, uh, the Aussie's uh, Alzheimer's website called My Your Minds. Actually, it's still there, it's very good. Uh. I think 
go and surf and look at what they got there. La. And down there, the most important thing is this thing. Is it too small? It's a bit small. Uh, okay, essentially, it says that there are seven items in red. Uh, and I reorganize it into uh, two plus two. La, uh. The first one has got four things. Uh. So I said, okay, uh, first we must uh, make sure that we mine, um, uh, we must, uh, wait, where's the thing now? Um, we must mind our habits eh? because uh, um, if we smoke and if we drink in excess, that will disturb our blood pressure mm -hmm. and also disturb our vessels. Eh? Then, of course, the next thing is this question of diet. Eh? This thing called healthy diet, which I will show you in a moment. Then there's also this question of mind your body, eh? which is to be physically active. Eh? Your body is not well done well taken care of if you do not exercise it. Uh. And just now, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Eileen, uh, uh, Eileen actually showed us what you could do uh, without wasting time. In fact, you actually make use of the commercial time. Uh. I thought that was quite good. Uh. So physically active is the name of the game. And buy your head. Uh, why is it important to buy your head? Now, when we get older, uh, we are not so steady. And sometimes uh, what we could do when young, we cannot do by old. For example, say, oh, something on the top shelf. Uh, when we were young, no problem. You get a stool, you climb up there, you will take it and come down. Uh. But when you're 75, you go up, the next thing that you will discover is you've fallen down. And not only that, you break your hip. Uh. So therefore, there's a need for us to recognize that at age 75, don't try. Lah, unless you're really, really fit. Uh. In fact, there is a video clip that shows somebody that was really fit that he could do it at 80 years old. But most of us got to be a bit mindful that, hey, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, okay, so don't fall. Please don't fall. Uh, because if you fall, you can injure your um, hip. Worse, you can injure your head. Uh, and there are many people who actually end up um, mentally affected because of a fall on the head. Huh? Okay, so uh, mind your head is very well quite important, right? So this four, huh? mind your habits, mind your diet, mind your body, and mind your head. These are all lifestyle related. Then the next one is mind your health checks. Huh? So if you have blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, overweight, go and see a doctor, set a target, and then work with him to improve it. Huh? If you don't have, it's said by the Singapore government that at age 40, you should go and have this checkup. And if you're all right, continue to check it once every three years. Uh, but of course, if you're not all right, then must continue to go uh, more than um, once a year. Uh. Okay, so mind your health checks is the second thing. Now, the next two uh, actually relates to dementia. And um, uh, one is to mind your social life. Uh, uh. Uh, this thing called social connectedness important for us particularly if we are the introvert type uh. Uh, not everybody is extrovert and social and what will happen is that if you are introvert as you go older you become even more introvert uh, then your world becomes smaller and smaller so for those of us who are not sociable must make effort to be sociable for those who are sociable please continue to be even more sociable I think it's supposed to be evidence-based that it will prevent dementia. Uh, social connectedness is very important. And then the last of the um, f uh, items there, uh, mind your brain. Uh. Here I'm talking about your brain as an organ that you should continue to exercise. Uh. Uh, we exercise our body, we must exercise our, our brain too. So watch television. Participate in debates, the coffee shop debate, that's good, that keep you alive. <laughs> uh, so uh, do form that coffee shop uh, discussion group and then uh, argue anything, la, anything you want to say. La, uh, yeah, uh, okay, so I think that's quite important, yeah? Okay, so then we move on to the next slide, uh, which is this uh, DEW. Uh, uh, these three things are important to prevent dementia from your blood pressure uh, and this one is uh, that, uh, your 
diet. Eh? So there's this thing called a healthy diet, which is quite simple in concept, but not so easy to implement la, because our habit and our desire is always against us. See? And if you look at this plate there, you see that the green stuff, so that's a vegetable, that occupies half of the plate. It should occupy half the plate. In other words, on our plate, um, for lunch and for dinner, half of it must be vegetable. They say, wow, doctor, so much. Uh, yeah. The idea is to have one cup, no, our drinking cup, 250 meals, that cup. Uh, imagine that it is vegetables that you cook. Uh, uh, so it can be boiled, gangong, boiled, uh, bitter god, whatever thing, uh, you, what you fancy. Uh, um, of course, you can stir fry it too, uh, if you want. Uh, but the idea is that one cup of vegetables for lunch, one cup of vegetables for dinner, and then uh, one fruit for lunch, one fruit for dinner. What our government talk about, two vegetables and two fruit. Uh, that's what they mean. Uh, so that should occupy half the plate. Mm. Then um, you see the fish there. Uh, okay, that fish is protein. Uh, so lean meat and fish. That should occupy one quarter of the plate. Mm. And then uh, the other quarter is actually, uh, they put a bread there, uh, is the starch. Uh, uh. So a small bowl of rice, um, kuih tiao, bihun, whatever you fancy. Uh. So that would be the thing. Uh. So it's actually not so difficult to think about it, uh, but to implement it is not easy. Where will we run in trouble? We don't want the vegetables. We have lots of meat. and. Um, uh, out, of course, must have lots of it. Lah, huh? So, therefore, it follow up the whole thing. So, we therefore need to say, hey, need to realign. Then there is some blue thing there. That is supposed to be the fat. Lah. The fat is supposed to be only one teaspoon. We need only one teaspoon of fat a day. And therefore, no fried food. Lah, huh? <laughs> You're not supposed to fry your food. Lah, huh? Of course, occasionally, you may fry it. Lah, but the idea is that don't fry your food. Why? Because your frying uh, add 50% to whatever you are taking, you know? So you have a fish that you steam, uh, is X calories. If you fry it, uh, it's 2X calories. Uh? So you can eat the same thing at half the calorie if you don't fry it, see? Uh? And then why do you fry our food in Singapore? In fact, it's the same, no? You go to Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, they fry the food. Why? It's nice, right? Crispy and whatever. Not. But more important is because you keep it from being bad. Tropical climate, the food cannot last. Ma. Uh, can you imagine a fish that you keep and don't fry? Uh, unless you put it in the fridge, la, uh, all it's become bad. So in the good old days, they fry everything, you see, uh, to keep it fresh. Uh. But of course, now we don't need that one. Uh. We got a fridge and so on. But the, the habit remains. Uh. Okay, so now we begin to know why people fry their food. Okay, then we move on from diet to the next thing, which is this um, exercise law. Uh. So the, the, the three figures tell the story. Uh. The idea is to have 30 minutes of exercise a day, five days a week. So that add together give you the 150. Lor, uh, so there is a health promotion board t-shirt with 150, right? Uh, uh, that is what it means. Uh, uh. And then this palate, that, that's the rubber thingy that you can stretch. Actually, there are lots of exercise you can do with it. Uh, and there's also the music to go with it. So if you're interested, catch up with health promotion board, enjoy their exercise class. Uh, uh, should try it. It uh, uh, was quite nice. I got to go and do that as well. Um, okay, then the next thing is um, this question of um, uh, your actually it should be sorry the way around. Uh, uh, the second, the one before is actually your diet uh, is weight control. Uh, uh. This one is to control your weight um, to make sure that you are within the desired body weight. And we use a BMI. Uh, it should be twenty three about. 18 to 23, probably about 22, that would be the best. Lah, huh? um, if you are bigger than that, then that's not good because your risk of diabetes go up, your risk of blood pressure go up, and so on, so on. Huh? Then, of course, um, you should then go and exercise and cut down your food. Huh? 
okay, then this is the exercise bit, uh, the 150 minutes a week. Uh. Okay, then if you want to be a bit for, more fancy, this is it, uh, metabolic syndrome. Uh, how do you diagnose it? Uh, we are supposed to be three out of five. Uh, if your waist is too much, if your body mass index is too much, or even one of those four conditions of overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes, as well as high cholesterol, then you qualify or become a metabolic syndrome patient. <laughs> uh, then what can we do? The TLC. Uh, TLC stands for Therapeutic Lifestyle Change. Uh, uh, not tender loving care here. And there are three things. Uh, diet, exercise, and weight control, I was trying to tell you earlier. right? Then for most people who are quite serious about things, it will work. But for the people who are not so staunch, then they will take medicine. Or, uh, but the latest I read about medicine is that it's never the same. So better go back to the DEW. Uh, that is the sure cure. And of the DEW, you know what is the most important? The W. If the W is right, the rest will be right. Uh, so that is an important message to take home. Uh, uh. So if tonight, if you forget everything, remember DEW, pay attention to the W. Uh, uh, then everything will be fine, seriously. Okay, now this one is a fancy slide to show you that, hey, if you have impaired glucose tolerance or impaired fasting blood sugar, because your blood sugar should be not more than this uh, uh, six, uh, not more than six, uh, and, uh, uh, if possible. Then between six to seven, that's a twilight zone. Uh, uh, so if you have that, that's impaired tolerance. Uh, so uh, ask your doctor to check um, with the fasting sugar, it should be less than six, then you're okay. In between six to seven, you're not quite okay. Uh, so then the risk of being diabetic is high. No? What can you do? You can certainly go back to the diet, exercise, and weight control. If not enough, there's a medicine called metformin that can give you. Is it effective? Yes. We are able to reverse 58% of patients from being diabetic, uh, from progressing to diabetic in the space of three years. So that's proven. That's proven by research. In fact, several researchers have followed the first research and it confirmed the same thing. Magic figure 56, 58%. Uh, so again, diet, exercise, weight control. Okay, so so much for this uh, controlling diabetes, controlling blood pressure and weight uh, in order to prevent stroke and prevent dementia. Then we move on. Caring for people with dementia. So there are two key ideas. Uh, first, the idea of assessment to stage. How do you know the person has dementia, and then how bad is the dementia, right? Uh, so there's this thing called FAST, stands for Functional Assessment Staging. Uh, quite good. Uh, I will show you in a minute. Of course, then in operational terms, there's this mild, moderate, and severe dementia. So what are we going to do about that? Uh, okay, so the assessment, there are seven things. Uh, so actually, it could be two, 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 uh, Two, one. Uh. So the first one, of course, is stage one. Uh. Stage one is people with dementia but can be asymptomatic. So you don't know that they got dementia. Uh. So uh, that is uh, stage one. Uh. They are all right. Uh. Then there's stage two where they begin to be very forgetful. Uh, important. Uh. I'm not saying that if you're forgetful, you're dementia. <laughs> Please don't go home with that kind of idea. Then you say, well, from. I'm dead now. Uh, no, 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 no. The thing is that we are all entitled to be forgetful. But it's only when you're persistently forgetful, then that's not quite all right. But even then, there are many of us who are by habit forgetful. Uh, so don't be too serious about it if it's just forgetfulness. But if you begin to have other things, like for example, you cannot do things uh, properly, then you have to then say, hey, what's happening here? Huh? So you have this uh, stage one, which is person with early, early, early dementia, but it does not show up. Yeah? So that's stage one. Then stage two is people a little bit forgetful sometimes, huh? but they're still 
uh, can be normal or not. Then it comes to stage 3, if I got early dementia and uh, Alzheimer's disease, huh? how do you know? This one, when you have a stressful situation, they cannot perform. Uh, hey, hello, Goligan, can you go and organize a tea party? They said, wow, tea party. I don't know how to organize it now. Too strong. Uh, uh, then you know that chap is probably not quite right. Uh, particularly if you know that he can organize it when he was younger. Uh. Okay, that's uh, stage three. Then stage four become a bit more evidence. Uh, uh. So handling finances, planning a function, he be begin to run in trouble. In fact, he will say, look, I, I, I think I can't do it. Uh, can you help me to sort this thing out? Uh? Because we know our limits. See? So then that will qualify to be mild dementia. Uh? Then the next stage, of course, is what? Is this uh, stage five? Uh? Stage five is moderate dementia. How do you use moderate dementia? He begins to have trouble um, choosing the proper clothing to wear. Uh? Uh? Right. Uh? That is fairly certain that this person is not quite right. La, huh? Then, of course, it gets on a bit further, stage six, uh, begins the trouble dressing, bathing, toileting, um, may even forget how to be continent, huh? and may change the behavior, don't want to bathe. Huh? Then the wife will scold, say, why you don't want to bathe? Uh, last time you bathe every day. Huh? Why? Because of behavior change. And that is why called BPSD. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Behavioral and Psychological Symptoms of Dementia, uh, BPSD. Uh, so these four letter words. Um, so if you reach that stage, then the person is likely to be moderate or moderately severe. Uh. Then of course, then the last stage of all is that he is really bad. He can't look after himself. Uh. It's a total dependence, and uh, they may end up in the nursing home. Uh, most of the time, or often enough. Uh, uh, see quite a lot of them in Bethany, the sick home. Okay, so what we do about that? Uh, so you have some rough idea. It's actually the last three stages, uh, five, six, seven, that you are fearful of. Uh. The first few can, uh, can still get along with life. So uh, what we're going to do with people who are demented, uh, uh, first as a carer, well, I think first to understand that this can happen to each of us, so don't be scared. And secondly is that uh, for uh, our loved one, uh, we also need to be, be sure what to do with them, right? Okay, so uh, we therefore have this uh, early dementia. Uh, so in early dementia, what are the few things you need to know? First is that you need to encourage the person to continue to be independent. Uh, Continue to interact with them and uh, make them live a full and life as possible. La. I think those of us who are a bit older probably will see that in our parents. La. Like my mother is a good example. Uh, she can remember the things in the past, but what she ate for lunch and dinner cannot remember. But never mind, uh, life can still go on. Uh, and it's important to therefore keep them to be uh, sort of socially connected with us uh, and then uh, encourage them to watch the television, they will fall asleep. Uh. So before we become that stage, let us teach ourselves, next time if I get a bit demented, I will continue to watch the TV. Uh, uh, because if you know it now, when you reach that stage, you are more likely to know to do the right thing, you see. Okay, then of course, um, this question of legal, financial uh, transactions, uh, may begin to look after the elderly person who is mildly demented. La. At, at this stage, uh, it would be good to get them to write their will. Because at this stage, uh, they have got lucid period. They are not bad. Uh, they can know, okay, I want to give half of my property to my daughter because it's always so nice. Uh, that kind of thing, you see. Um, and then uh, uh, get it sorted out and get the will done. Uh, and then uh, uh, try not to change the wheel. Uh, because when you change the wheel, a lot of things can happen, right? Whether it's under duress and sort of stuff. So um, that's the first thing that you need to think about when the person is early dementia, if it had not been done. Uh. Then I think this lasting power at 30, that means to assign somebody to look after ourselves if we are no longer able to do that. This LPA, uh, this 
Mental Capacity Act, the government is trying to promote and pass in 2010. In fact, we are all encouraged to go and sign LPA, which is assign somebody to look after us when we no longer can comprehend things. Uh, uh. So um, we is supposed to, to be uh, available in many places. Uh, uh. So uh, LPA, lasting power attorney, where you say, look, if I am not able to think and decide, I will appoint so and so to take care of my things. Uh. And it can be your children, it can be your good friend, uh, whoever. Uh. But of course, you want to choose somebody that is younger than you. Uh, because uh, likely that you, you need the person to be there when you need him. <laughs> okay, so therefore it's early dementia. You must settle, get all these things. Uh. Then comes the next step, which is uh, moderate and moderately severe dementia. Okay, at this stage, you know that the person begins to have behavioural problems, keep on asking you the same question many, many times, accuse you of stealing their things. Hey, look, I put $50 here, it's gone. Have you taken it? That kind of thing. And they can be quite fierce. Huh? Okay, what you do, you need to understand that, look, this is not his problem or her problem. It is, it is part of dementia. So don't grudge the person, don't take it on the person, but try to help the person. And often the emotion can be settled by being reassuring. Huh? In fact, many of them throw tantrum because they are scared. Yeah? So you say, look, don't worry. Um, it is not that I've taken your money. It's just that when we get older, we become forgetful. Law, right? So sit down, think carefully. The money might be somewhere. You know? uh, and true enough, you probably will find the money if you ever ask the person to sit down and think carefully. So it's that kind of existence that you begin to have with the person. Uh, uh, then you go on to the next stage, which is severe dementia. So severe dementia need total help. So you therefore need to decide whether you can look after the person or is it better to send the person to a nursing home. Uh. Sending a person to a nursing home is not shameful. Uh. I mean, many of us say, wow, send my parents there, how can, you know? Where's filial party? It's not that. It's whether you have the capacity to look after them because they can be quite demanding. Uh? They may not be able to swallow properly even. You know? Then they also don't know how to turn properly. So there's a lot of issues there. So uh, there's a need for us to feel that it's better to look for help and look for support rather than struggle through and be totally burned out because we just cannot cope with it. Uh, so this is something to remember uh, that a person with severe dementia, if we are not able to help, call our friends and call our family members and the community to do something. Uh, uh, then we will not be stressed out, you see. Okay, so that's basically what I got for, for, for everybody uh, tonight. So just three take-home messages. First is to remember stroke and dementia, share common things, uh, the deadly quartet high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, overweight, better take care of them. If you have uh, uh, this uh, uh, smoking and uh, drinking too much, also should cut that down. Uh, of course, if you're sedentary, go and exercise, right? So that's number one. Number two is that act now. Uh, I think it's important to act tomorrow. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to change my lifestyle. I'm going to make sure that my blood pressure is properly controlled. Uh, uh, make sure that I'm socially connected and make sure that I exercise my mind. Right? That kind of idea. And then um, the, the third point is that, well, you may be asymptomatic for a long time. That is where you, number two is important. Lah. But when it becomes symptomatic, don't worry. Try and deal with it. If it's somebody that you love that is in this trouble, try your best to help them based on the three stages that I have shown. Uh, huh? Okay, so I think this is about all that I have. So I, I took longer than I, I thought. I thought I could finish it at 10 to 9. So how much time have we got? Uh, we have time for two minutes. Uh, okay, so uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sure first we want to thank uh, Prof Go for a very good enlightening talk. Let's give him a hand of applause. 
All right, now we have time for Q&A. So if you have a question, could we have uh, maybe the technical staff to help? Yeah, the, the, the mics. Yeah, if you need a mic, uh, Evelyn has kindly come to give a helping hand and she will just give you the mic. So we can get more questions if you're very fast. You know, put up your hand, then we'll give you a chance to ask your question. Anybody? Any first person to ask question? Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah. One of the ukulele okay. singers. Uh, yeah, Dr. Go. Yeah, Dr. Go, can you hear me? Mm. Yes, I can. Now, uh, I've got a friend who uh, has some problem in memory. Mm. And uh, of late, uh, he was able to drive all over. Mm. And one day, he drove down town and he found difficulty to come back home. Mm. Uh, it's not something that he's unfamiliar with. Uh, how do you gauge his situation? Right, right. Um, Yes, I think this thing called prevention, prevention before it happens. Uh. Uh, of course, there are several things a person can do. Uh, one is that um, as we get older, I think it's important to uh, remember where we park the car. Uh, yeah. uh, because uh, it, it can happen to anybody. I remember I parked my car one evening in this, um, this uh, what call it, uh, UOB Plaza. There's a Plaza 1 and Plaza 2. You know? So I parked it in Plaza 1. Then after dinner, I'm going to send the guests back to the airport to go to Japan. You know? Can you imagine my suffering when I, I, I couldn't find my car? Because I forget that the city car is in Plaza 1. <laughs> so the whole of Plaza 2, of course no car. No? Then the Japanese man became really agitated because his place about to fly off. <laughs> okay, so number one is that make sure that uh, when you park the car, turn back, note the number. Um, I think that's quite important. If possible, park it near a lift, but remember to look again at the number of the floor. Uh, um, again, got stories to tell. Uh, I thought I parked my car next to the lift, but I forgot that actually I parked it in level two and I was hunting it in level three. <laughs> right. So, um, therefore, three pieces of information uh, which floor, which lot. If you, he has got a lot. Uh, and then it's uh, where is it near to? Uh. In fact, one of my friends um, will turn back and take a picture of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's super kiasu. But it says, the golden guy, you don't know. <laughs> so so, so that's, that's what I would say. Now, of course, we also need to coach ourselves what to do if the situation happens. The best thing is that forget it, go home, and then look for, for support to come and look for the car. Isn't it? I'm not talking about parking of cars here. I'm talking about him driving, you know. Him driving on a road which is familiar to him. Mm. And all mm. of a sudden, he kind of uh, uh, can't remember the familiar route which he normally takes, you know. Yes. So he felt very lost. Mm. And mm. Uh, of course, he was very concerned whether uh, he's having demand, uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, mm. Now, but I was just wondering about a situation like this. At what stage is this man in already? Mm. It sounded serious to me. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a layman looking at the situation. I thought it sounded serious. But what was your, your feeling about okay. this person? Uh, first is diagnosis. La, huh? Is he really having dementia? A person has dementia if the memory loss is progressive. So this suddenly say, hey, where the hell I am? It's not dementia. Why? Because some uh, places change. And you can be driving down the road all the time. You have not paid attention to the changes. So one fine day, it changed too much that you cannot pick it up. Or you may be driving too fast and you miss the landmarks. You know? So, but of course, it gives you a bit of concern. It, it yeah. happens a few times. Uh, if it happens a few times, then a few swallows will make a summer. <laughs> la. <laughs> if it's a few times, uh, I, would, I would encourage him to stop driving. Yeah. Mm? See a doctor, check it out to see whether he has truly memory loss. If he has, then it's probably early dementia. Treat what can be treated which is the blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the weight, yeah, the diabetes, all these, if you treat them, it can actually help. Then, um, teach him to remember things. Uh, uh, Dr. <laughs> Mr. Ong talked about re uh, memory versus, it's not a bad idea, no? it really helps you to remember too. Yeah? So to sum up that is that number one, if it happens more than once, you begin to suspect that, hey, maybe, he is 
having early dementia, then bring him to get him to see a doctor, uh, and then I think he should stop driving, lah. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next question. Anyone? Put up your hands. Yeah. Eileen. Yeah. Eileen. Yeah. Eileen. Yeah. Sorry, it's on. Um, I just want to know: Is there a uh, you know a lot of people are always in denial, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I don't have. But you know the same thing keep occurring. You know the same um, kind of things yeah, that they yeah. forget that yes. they keep occurring. Yes. I'm just wondering whether there is a kind of test that we can give ourselves. I mean, for me too, it's good mm. to know. At what level is there such a thing? Level of forgetfulness, or I'm not talking about dementia. Yes. Things that you know, is is there a kind of test like that yes, we can yes. we, give? We have. Or we have. Um, there is this screening test. Um, called the ECAG score or this uh, a, a better test and actually there are 10 questions that you ask your, you complete uh, uh, so uh, the questions I say okay I give you a number 3259 remember it after one minute can you remember it's 3259 uh, so uh, so that is one and then uh, what, what is the date today the year today um, where do you live uh, we used to have Prime Minister of Singapore, but I thought that uh, not everybody remembered that. Uh, so we have taken that out. Um, and then, um, who is the person that is look uh, that you, you point uh, point to? Uh, um, and then, uh, where is this place? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, how many questions is that? Seven. Seven uh. Uh, then the yeah, then the uh, other question will be to say, okay. So. Um, uh, what are you doing? Yeah? And then this, uh, can you buy this um, for 100, uh, 7 each time? Yeah? So 193 minus 7 and so on and so forth. It's not easy, you know. Uh, <laughs> that way, even, even though the better also can fail. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, okay. And then what else? 9. Uh, then the 10th one is that. Uh, Remember three things. So you show him three things and then ask him to, to name it. Uh, so this is a pen, this is a clock, this is a watch, whatever. Uh, yeah. So you're supposed to score seven out of ten. Yeah. If you cannot score seven out of ten, they say, oh, okay, so better go and check it out. So that is number one objective test. Number two is this question of time. Uh. Over time, is it getting more and more forgetful? Is he having more and more difficulty? So just like, uh, what's, what's your, uh, sorry, what, what is uh, your Ronnie, name? Ronnie, Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, yeah. Uh, say the chappy who, who cannot find the way, uh, if he repeatedly cannot find the way, uh, then he probably Check may up. not be quite right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so time will tell us whether the person is, um, repeating the same mistake. And what is even more alarming is that if it's progressive, uh, uh, today forget, but tomorrow um, also have trouble with putting on his clothes. You know, and then after that, uh, don't know how to feed himself properly. And then you know that, oh, the be, but it would be over a long time. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Thank you very much. And I hope you've all forgotten the four digit. No Toto playing here. <laughs> <laughs> so that won't be dementia, you just forget the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Anyone else for a question? Quick so that we can uh, have more. Otherwise, who? Mr. Leong. Oh, Mr. Leong. Okay, okay, okay. Give Mr. Leong a chance. Thank you. He's in a wheelchair, so he gets priority. <laughs> okay, he has. Hello. Ah, yeah. Yes. I have a stroke four years ago. Right, Mr. Leong. Now yeah. my fear is after listening to you attentively. I have fear of getting dementia. <laughs> now, oh, okay. anyway, uh, uh. my question is that uh. while you are talking, attending, I listen to you attentively, yes. I wonder whether dementia can be delayed. Uh. That is, whether I can delay dem getting dementia. Yes, yes. Because, yes. of That's course, yes. or can delay. Can. Oh, okay. that's very really good. Thank you. Right. Uh, in fact, you are only taking some of the steps that helps to prevent dementia. And number one is that being socially connected. 
Uh, so, need to come to church more often, need to come and attend these meetings more often, because that will keep you socially connected, right? Yes. And number two is to participate and use your mind, just like what you're doing now. Ask questions, you know, and then uh, debate with people. Uh, that would be the two very important things to delay dementia, right? Then the first two things is that you had a stroke. So, uh, do you have high blood pressure? Uh, now reduce a lot, Very quite good. normal. Very good. So make sure it remains normal. Mm. Huh? So follow up with the doctor. Um, do you have diabetes? No. Good. So uh, keep it that way. I think your weight is probably correct. La. So it is mm, more ex or less, explain, <laughs> explain why he does not have diabetes. You see? Actually, weight is a very important factor. Huh? So uh, stay that way. Um, and then uh, stay active, uh, even wheelchair, you can still wheel yourself around. Uh. So that would be the basic idea. Uh. Keep a good lifestyle, right? Treat your, the, the four important diseases, be socially connected, and the fourth one is uh, exercise your mind. Uh. What, what you said, Professor, mm. I have been doing that mm. actively. Mm. Very good. As you said, yeah. participating in the church activities, programs, Yes. And if I have a chance, of course, I like to contribute. Sure. You see? Yes. And I keep my so-called mind busy. Yes. And then, of course, Sunday will be a good day for me. You see, sermon, I go back, as Mr. Ong mentioned, I go back sometimes to write out the sermon, the salient points on the sermons, the service. Fantastic. And then uh, the hymns, sometimes so beautiful, I go over them, especially yes. learning some of the, the words, the phrases. Yes. So I continue that. And just now, Edwin was talking about his group, all these things. I cannot join the ukulele because my leg have still not so good. So I join them some, once in a while, uh, watching them play table tennis. I play table tennis before I have my stroke. So they, 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 they are very active, and I join them in the 9214 group. Ladies group, sometimes I participate when they are welcome all. <laughs> right. So like tonight like this. Yeah, so, Mr. Leong, yeah. you're a long, long way from dementia. Yeah. You can take it from us. I'm yeah. sure you deserve a big hand of Thank applause. You. Praise the Lord. Long, long, the long Lord. way. Praise long, Lord. long way. The way you talk. Yeah. Okay, it, we'll it, allow Mr. last... Mr. Leong is Leong, a good Leong. role model. Right? Yeah, another good role yeah. model. True. Yeah. Last two questions. One to Edwin and yeah. last one. Edwin, yeah. yeah. Edwin. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, um, I, I think... For most of us, as we age, and myself included, sometimes uh, we all have got lot, lots of fears. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, and actually, uh, dementia actually is one that, uh, as we are become more aware of, uh, sometimes we <laughs> tend to be a bit more forgetful. Uh, mm. And then, you know, the, the fear can actually strike you, you know, right? So, uh, and sometimes it can be a paralyzing fear. Uh, so. Um, I think what we like to encourage all of us uh, is mm. this, uh, that, like um, we do have a lot of activities. Mm. We, we, we are not only activity driven, uh, but we also want people to grow spiritually, right? Okay? But uh, since we are talking about dementia, and this is something that actually affects uh, a lot of us, including myself, and uh, from time to time, uh, the, the thought does uh, strike mm. me, right? Mm. Okay? Uh, whether you know it, it could be just an onset, like what uh, Professor uh, Go had mentioned, uh, is it stage two, right? No, right. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think uh, what we can do is this. Uh, I think we uh, should not resign ourselves to mm. the fact that you know we can't do anything. We like to invite uh, uh, all of us. Uh, you've got your friends. You've got uh, elderly ones, family members. If you feel that uh, you need to bring them out, right? Okay, mm. uh, because sometimes just the mere fact of going out mm. uh, of the house, uh, mm. I think it's helpful. Mm. I, I'd like to share something, uh, uh, and I think tied up with dementia, and I, I think the, the concern uh, is also uh, on depression. Two weeks ago, uh, my classmate, right, uh, we were from Victoria School, we were quite close. Uh, his body was found. Uh, after two days, oh. dead, mm. right? Mm. Uh, he suffered from depression, mm. and uh, and it, it was a very severe depression, 
clinical depression. Mm -hmm. And when he goes into it, uh, he goes in a deep hole. Deep. <laughs> Try to call him, SMS him, mm -hmm. no reply at all. Right. And then uh, from time to time, I think he suffered it uh, for many years. And among ourselves, our friends, we try to draw him out. I used to uh, go out with him for long walks, right? And uh, the last two years, we used to go for walks. And uh, the last six months, eight months, no reply, SMS, calls, and whatnot. And um, what, what, we, we, what, what I'm uh, trying to share is this, uh, that I think there's help available, right? Mm. The church is here. Uh, we don't profess to, to be all things to all men, right? Okay? But uh, there are certain things that uh, perhaps you need practical things. Uh, come and join us for our activities. Uh, if you need practical help, sometimes you like to talk to us. Some of us, I think at our age, uh, some 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, I think have certain wealth of, uh, of experience mm. to, to share with one another. And sometimes the mere fact of talking also is, is good. Uh, because we, I, I, I hold certain things about, uh, about diseases. Uh, and, but I think uh, dementia from, you know, the fact that I, 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 I've been involved in the seniors uh, ministry for about four years or so, uh, forces mm. me uh, to read a lot about mm illnesses and sicknesses uh, about, uh, you know, aging. And, uh, but I, I think uh, the, the, I mean, with due respect to Professor Go, uh, I, I think uh, dementia, uh, you, you can, uh, what, uh, um, delay, delay, yeah. delay, you know, yeah. right, okay? Yeah. You, you can delay it, right, okay? But, uh, but the, the problem is that I think sometimes when someone has got some inkling uh, that he may have it, uh, you may withdraw, you know. Mm. And when you withdraw, uh, that may not be a good lah. Uh. So that's why uh, friends, family members, you all uh, know about it. We help one another, come with us. And, and even for me, uh, I, I am sharing from personal experience. Uh, mm. right? um, I took up the ukulele uh, and, and Richard and a few of them <laughs> know. Uh, that I, I started off with zero, from some zero base, uh, right? Okay. Uh, although I, I do have a love for, for music, I, my, my son sometimes when I play the ukulele, he says, Dad, uh, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I mean wrong. Well, you know, sometimes we, uh, there is one of us, uh, one professional singer, uh, you know, one of us, Maurice, he says that some of us, uh, we play our instrument, uh, shok sendiri, you know, right? You know, we do not know, we have please just strum. But okay, <laughs> la, I think that, 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 that's okay, right? Okay. But, okay, uh, Edwin, we get your point, <laughs> and I think, in summary, we should all be sociable like him. Okay, give him a clap. Thank you for your contribution, Edwin. Last question, the last one. Okay. Uh, Prof Ko, tonight yes. we seem to talk more on dementia, and we know it's progressive, and we understand, we learn a lot. But uh, there's this, the silent stroke. Uh. Uh. How do you recognize and I also heard about mini stroke. So how do a mm. person recognize that? Because uh, I think two days ago we met a lady mm. who said that she had twice a silent stroke, mm. but mm. The, the first time she didn't know. So how do a how does a person know that whether uh, he or she suffered from one and the uh, intervention to be you know carried out so that you don't go into <coughs> a bigger stroke or like. What Liner mm. and Mr. Leong, they are is, you know, easily recognized straight away. Mm. So what is a silent stroke? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you. I think that's an important question. I'm glad that you asked. Well, uh, as the name suggests, a silent stroke is uh, silent in that you have no um, sense that something has happened. Lah, huh? Now, if you look at our brain, there's only one part that uh, so of, uh, is, is clear to us. For example, if we cannot move, uh, they say, hey, hello, what is wrong with my power? Uh, so the motor cortex, if there is a stroke that affects it, you will know. Right? Now what about sensation? Uh, there's such a thing called a sensory stroke. No? The person feels that 
or rather cannot feel half the body, but the power is okay. Yeah? Uh, and you complain bitterly about, hey, I cannot feel my left side or I cannot feel my right side. So that is kind of somewhat silent. Lah, huh? Because we, we, we console the person by saying, well, um, at least your power is there, so enjoy. Yeah? Don't worry about that one, you slowly get better. So therefore, silent stroke uh, does not tell us that it's there. But then how do you know? Well, if you go and do what called MRI, uh, where you do an X-ray study of the brain, you can actually see little, um, what called infarcts, uh, little um, uh, sort of uh, destructions of the brain. Uh? In fact, that happens all the time. If you go and do an MRI on an 80 year old man or woman, you will see lots of that. But it's okay, the person can still function. So, in other words, um, silent stroke, so be it. But what is more important is that let us take the preventive measures. So, make sure that the four things high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, overweight is taken care of. If you take care of these four, then likely that would not be a silent stroke. Lah. Okay, then the next thing is that, hey, what about mini stroke? Okay, a mini stroke is actually what I call a transient loss of uh, function uh, and it recovers within 24 hours. Often it recovers in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. You know? For example, the person may be actually eating breakfast, then the, then the fork drop on the table. Hey, hey, that, is, that is unusual. Huh? So that is an example of a mini stroke. Yeah? What must you do? A mini stroke can herald a major stroke. So all mini stroke should be managed by a doctor, see a doctor. And often what we do is that uh, we look for risk factors and then put this person on aspirin, that kind of thing. Lah, yeah? That will then prevent the big stroke from coming. Suddenly if there's high blood pressure, we should treat diabetes, we should treat high cholesterol, we should treat. And if a person is overweight, they say, look, I think it's a teachable moment, better go and cut down your weight. Yeah? So that is uh, as far as mini strokes go. Then if you look at our brain circulation, there's an anterior, there's a front part of the brain, there's a middle part of the brain, there's a high part of the brain. The front part of the brain, you can get mini stroke or by just, hey, his behavior is a bit odd. So odd behavior may be actually a mini stroke for a front part of the brain, not the front circulation. Then the middle circulation, of course, you get weakness, you get weakness of the whole side. Um, so, so transiently cannot hold the fork, that kind of thing. Then what about the, the back part of the back circulation? The back circulation classically cannot swallow properly. So there are people who actually have a stroke uh, which are heralded by, hey, look, the chef cannot swallow or vomit a lot. But um, particularly cannot swallow. La. Vomit, all sorts of things can cause vomiting. So that doesn't quite count. Uh, but suddenly cannot swallow, uh, that is significant. Uh, so this one should be treated to uh, so see a doctor. Uh, yeah. uh, so mm. you, you're you mentioning about aspirin. Uh, since it's uh. an OTC drug, uh, can, as, we, uh, uh, as we age, can yeah. we take it just without, uh, I mean, as a preventive cause? Can uh, a person just without seeing a doctor, like our age, say 60 plus, and we just go pharmacy and buy some aspirin, cataprin, and take? No, no, cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, you, you should um, uh, so see a doctor. I mean, to start off with, if you've got no risk factors, why take it? Uh, so if your pressure is all right, no diabetes, uh, cholesterol normal, your weight is risky, okay, don't take it. Uh, no need. Uh. You, you have all this thing, but then you are under medication. But then you could see a doctor. Why, why must you see a doctor? Number one is that you want to monitor the more fundamental things, which is your blood pressure, <laughs> your diabetes and whatnot. And then taking aspirin also has got its consequences. Uh. Often they get small bleed in the stomach, so they are their blood count actually drop, the hemoglobin drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, in a nursing home, routinely, we will follow those old people and if their hemoglobin drops, they say, hey, look, should we take off the aspirin? Yeah. Then, how about aspirin or is it Pravix? Well, 
they touted the idea that Pravix is safer than SP. Nonsense, uh, they are equally fierce, uh, <laughs> and equally good. Uh, you know? um, more important is to say, do you really did it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prof. Go. Okay, Irene, there are lots of things you can DIY. Do it yourself. <laughs> but taking medicine is definitely not DIY, otherwise you become DIE. <laughs> 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 so don't play play, uh. not with your body, you know, not with health. Okay, health, see doctor. That is worth spending your money. Other things can stinge. <laughs> not, no, not, not that Irene stinge, she's very generous. <laughs> she's my good friend, so I can right, right. <laughs> talk like that with her. Okay, I know we can carry on, but we have come to the end of a very wonderful session. I hope you all agree with me, and I think... Prof Go deserves a big hand of applause. Uh, not only a big hand of applause, I need my uh, better half to come up here. Well, it, uh, it's a pleasure to certainly share with everybody. The, yeah, what have you got? Yeah, what have I got? Oh, oh I don't know. What happened? <laughs> They're not dementia. <laughs> Just forgetfulness. But might be the beginning sign. <laughs> A little right. token of appreciation to Prof Go. Very small. See, women are very practical. We don't want to give him another tie. We don't want to give him another fountain pen. We don't want to give him a hamper. So we give him a little token. He can go and spend it the way he likes. Thank, Thank you very so much. much. Thank you, Prof Go. And now, uh, the men in this church always has the last say. Now, men... <laughs> If you don't want your wife to have the last say, come to this church. You know why we're called brethren? Because the brethren has the last say. So my husband will have this last say in spite of this being organized by ladies' group. Wow. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> You've forgotten! Ah! After listening to the talk on dementia. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's uh, just uh, bow down our heads and give thanks for the food, and then we can go and have fellowship. Dear Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for sending uh, Prof Go in our midst, and uh, we pray that whatever we learn, we may be able to apply them and uh, help us as we journey through life. We thank you for this time, and we thank you for the food in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We trust you've enjoyed yourselves. And come back again when we next organize another health talk. All right. The refreshments. Irene, left or right? Refreshments. That's right. Okay, the refreshments are in the annex. Please go out there and help yourself. I, I don't know. Be surprised by the ladies. I don't know what is there. Okay. Please mingle around. Get to know one another. I know you, uh, many of you come from different churches. Just uh, mix and befriend others and be sociable. Yeah. When you're sociable, you're less likely to have dementia. Thank you. Good night. God bless. Betty, if they want the PowerPoint, can get it from... Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you for being so generous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for anyone who wants a, a Prof Go's a PowerPoint, yeah. uh, we can try to email you. Can, can we email? Uh. Yeah. Uh, if you leave your email address, we will email you a copy if you're interested, okay? Thank you. Good night. God bless. <laughs>